Let's talk about Einstein notation because this is one of the most crucial things you need to know if you're going to get anywhere in tensor calculus. I'm going to describe Einstein notation using four simple rules that should allow you to tackle most problems in this area. So let's begin. When you're starting off, Einstein notation can be pretty annoying. I would use a stronger word, but this is a family show and I'd much rather have four-year-olds watch this video than those Spider-Man Elsa videos. Anyway, one of the reasons Einstein notation is annoying is that in addition to using indices as subscripts, so like a sub i for example, which you might have already done quite frequently, you're also using indices as superscripts. And this can be really confusing because when you're new to tensors, you tend to confuse the superscripts for powers. But they're not powers, they're superscripts. In fact, for the rest of this series, if I ever want to raise something to a power, I'm going to be using parentheses. So a super i to the power 2 or a super i squared would be written like this, but a with a simple i will be written like this, a super i. Now, to be quite honest, I'm not really aware of a short way of saying superscript indices. I could just say a superscript i, but that takes more time, and I'm too lazy to say the extra syllable, so I'm just going to call it a super i. Let's move on from basic indexing to more involved topics. In tensor calculus, a lot of expressions will involve summation over particular indices. This means you'll see lots of expressions like this, where I have the sum from i equals 1 to i equals 3 of a sub i times x sub i. This is, of course, just a1x1 plus a2x2 plus a3x3. In Einstein notation, when we write summations like these, we don't use the sigma symbol, we just write a sub i times x sub i. And this brings me to the foundational rule of Einstein notation, which is that if you have a single term, then any index that is repeated twice is summed over the positive integers, usually from 1 to 3. It's 1 to 3 mainly because there are three dimensions, and we tend not to go higher than that for the most part. For example, if we have aij times bj, then according to rule 1 of Einstein notation, this term would be equivalent to aij1b1 plus aij2b2, plus AI3B3. Now just a couple of things to go over here. The first is that the index that is summed over, in this case the index J, is called a dummy index. A dummy index is an index that is repeated twice in a term, and I can replace a dummy index like J with any letter or index that I want as long as that letter or index satisfies two conditions. The first is that the letter or index cannot already be in the term I have, so I can't replace my dummy index j by i. The second condition is that the replacement index is also defined over the same range that the original dummy index is defined over, so in this case from 1 to 3. So for example, another way I could write aij times b sub j would be to replace j by something like r. So I'd get a sub i r times b sub r, where r varies from 1 to 3. This replacement, because it satisfies both of these conditions, is valid. So I've talked about dummy indices like j, but what about indices like i? Well, i is something we call the free index. Like the dummy index, the free index can take on any value that the dummy index can take on, so 1, 2, 3 for example. The difference is that the free index is not summed over, which means that it can only take on one of these values in a given term. In other words, i can be either 1, 2, 3, etc., but it can only be one of these numbers and not multiple. Now, unlike the dummy index, the free index occurs only once in a given term, and we cannot always replace the free index by another free index. For example, I can't just replace the free index i in a sub i j times b sub j by another free index k and necessarily get the same result. k could be 2, for instance, and i could be 1. With a dummy index, though, you can perform a replacement without too much trouble. So just to summarize, a dummy index is summed over, it occurs twice, and it can be replaced by another dummy index. A free index is not summed over, it only occurs once, and it cannot be replaced by another free index. These definitions of dummy and free indices, I'm going to call them rule 2. Now the third rule of Einstein notation is pretty simple. I just said that a free index occurs once in a term, and a dummy index occurs twice. The third rule says that we cannot have three or more of the same index in a single term. So for example, we're allowed to write a sub i j times b sub i j, but we can't write a sub i i times b sub i j, 
or a sub ij times b sub jj. In Einstein notation, you can only have free indices that occur once or dummy indices that occur twice in a single term. There's no such thing as an index that occurs three or more times in the same term. If you do see an index that occurs three or more times in the same term, then either you can simplify things and prevent that same index from being seen so many times, or you made a mistake somewhere. Just a quick note that when we count indices in a single term, we're counting superscripts and subscripts together. We're not separating the counts. What I mean by that is if I have something like a sub j super j, then j is not a free index. j is a dummy index because it occurs twice. Once in the subscript plus once in the superscript. So we actually have to sum over j in this term. And if I have something like a super j j sub i, then i is the free index and j is the dummy index. Again, we're counting superscripts and subscripts together. Another thing to note is that when you see two terms like this combined together, then you might be immediately inclined to say, hey, that's not right. The index j has occurred four times in this expression, which goes against rule number three. And you would be partially correct. The index j has occurred four times in this expression, but that's not actually in violation of rule three. The reason is that this whole expression consists of two terms being added together. Rule three says that no index may occur three or more times in a single term, but if multiple terms are added together, the index counter basically resets after each term. That means the number of times j occurs is actually two in the first term and two in the second term, which makes it a dummy variable in both terms. This is fully within the legal limits allowed by rule three, which only limit the index appearances to single terms. Terms that are added together aren't actually counted in this situation, they're counted separately. The fourth rule of Einstein notation is that when you have an equation involving terms in Einstein notation, the free indices on the left must match the free indices on the right. Again, just to remind you, free indices are indices that only occur once in a given term. So according to this rule, an equation like x sub i equals a sub i j times b sub j is fine because on the right hand side your only free index is i, and on the left your only free index is also i. Remember, a free index only occurs once. In addition, if we had something like the second equation, then again the only free index on the right hand side is i, because if you look at the terms, j appears twice in this first term, and k appears twice in both the first and second terms. This means that j and k are dummy indices, but i only appears once in the first term and once in the second term, so therefore it's a free index. And on the left hand side, i is also the only free index, which means that both sides are consistent. However, if we had these equations, then in both cases, there's an inconsistency between the free indices on either side of the equality. In the first equation, i is the only free index on the left, but i and j are free indices on the right. So this first equation is written incorrectly, it's meaningless in Einstein notation. In the second equation, j is the only free index on the left, but i is the only free index on the right. Again, there's a mismatch, and this equation is wrong. Finally, in this third equation, i is the only free index on the left, but i and j are free indices on the right, which again, makes this equation wrong. Anyway, that should do it for this video. In the next lesson, I'm going to continue with Einstein notation with a few more examples and identities. I'd like to thank the following patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher, and I've put a link to my Patreon in the description. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.